right, everyone. How's it going? Uh, this is Sean Snow again. You've been watching me all day, but in just just in case you uh, just started watching and tuning in. So, as you might recognize, we have the ever popular Jason Lay from Capcom Games Vancouver with us. Jason, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome. So, we're showing off the latest and greatest for Dead Rising off the record. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about first what we're what we're watching or what we're what we're showing off here at E3? Let me uh, switch the game feed so these guys can see it too. Yeah. So this is our our brand new demo that we're showing off of E3, and this is demoing the new area in Fortune City, which is the Uranus Zone theme park. Why is it called Uranus Zone? Well, because it's funny, and <laughs> that's one of the big things about Dead Rising is it's it's got the humor. This isn't Resident Evil. It's not a, a gritty. Uh, gory zombie game. It's it's a bit of a funny zombie game, but of course violent and gory as well. Yeah, I, I tell you, I, I cracked up when I first saw the uh, trailer and Frank's like, I'm going to Uranus Zone. It was the perfect perfect intro. It seemed all serious and I'm like, wow, maybe this trailer's going to be different. <laughs> and uh, well, it was different, that's for sure. Yeah. In a good way. It was awesome. So Yeah, the team had a lot of fun putting that trailer together, showing off some of the wacky stuff that can happen in the Ur Uranus Zone theme park area. And it does speak to what Dead Rising's all about. It's it's fun, it's action, but it's definitely got that bit of black humor to it. Awesome. So, actually, that brings up another question that I want to ask. Do you guys do all your trailers in-house then? Yes, all the trailers for Dead Rising are done in-house. Very cool. I notice it's all done in-engine as well, so. Yep, yep. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're pretty uh, pretty proud of the, the game and how it looks, so no problem at all grabbing the footage right out of the game. We've got a fantastic uh, group of guys that are on the creative side that do the trailers, and each one, I think, just gets better and better. And this one was a lot of fun because we've done a lot of the sort of action rock video style ones. This one, we thought the, the theme park is such an opportunity to do something different, so let's, let's do something that's just really kooky, and it, it worked out awesome. Awesome. Really cool. So uh, here, here's a question uh, someone's asking real quick. Maybe we can clarify this. So what, what's your role with Dead Rising? Like, what, what do you do at Capcom? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, originally I was one of the founders of Blue Castle Games, which is the studio that was purchased uh, by Capcom and is now Capcom Vancouver. And I worked on the original Dead Rising 2. Uh, I was a senior producer on that, and I was mostly in charge of the core gameplay on off the record, I'm the executive producer of the game. Very cool. He's the guy for all of your questions. Although I'm sure you probably won't answer all of ours. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Yeah, there's some no-fly zones. I'll let you know when I can't talk. <laughs> well, I'm sure Brian's talking over us somewhere in the show, making sure we don't say anything we shouldn't. So, uh, tell us a little bit about off the record. Um, just the, the top line stuff. I think most people know, but in case they, they're just seeing this for the first time, what's this all about? Right. Well, off the record, it was originally going to be a director's cut of Dead Rising 2. There was always a director's cut planned. And the interesting sort of twist in the, the tale of how this product came to be was as soon as we saw how into Frank West the fans were, uh, we decided that there was actually an opportunity here to do something very different. And rather than do a typical director's cut, which still would have been, I think, an awesome game, do sort of a reimagining of the Fortune City outbreak and bringing back the fan favorite Frank West and all of the the cool gameplay opportunities that would come with that him with his camera we've got this crazy casino world that just lends itself to taking uh, photographs all of the erotica right. and humor uh, opportunities and so on so that's how it got off the ground and the teams had a, a heck of a fun time putting it all together and not just putting in you know the the Uranus zone is one new area but adding everything to the game, adding new weapons, adding new uh, food items and clothing items, and we've got new bosses, and it's just going to be a big, big game. Anybody who's played Dead Rising 2, I think, are, are going to get a, a lot of value out of this one, and they're really going to appreciate how different it is. Very cool. So, how much of that are we going to see here uh, in this demo? Actually, I should make this a little bigger so they can get a closer look at it. Yeah, the, the demo definitely shows off a lot of the new uh, content. Uh, here at this point, you can see the clown car, which is uh, a new vehicle that we put into the game. And so, this is that a butt or is that boobs? That, that's a butt. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the clown car. Um, and beyond the the new vehicle that we have here, 
I think we're showing five new combo weapons in this environment. Yeah. And a uh, number of new sort of base weapons, plus some of the new food. We've added cotton candy and popcorn and, and things like that to the world. And the rides, just passing the spinning ride there. These offer some new gameplay where they're sort of zombie death traps. If you go and take those barricades out of the way right. and bring some lures and lure the zombies <laughs> in, you can take out the you know masses of zombies with these rides. Plus, you've got the camera to take pictures of these things right. and then get even more PP. So it's pretty cool. That's really cool. So not only are you causing mayhem, but with the pictures back, it's, it's a whole. Yeah, other you can element. record the mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, is there is there still a limit on the pictures like you saw in Dead Rising 1? Uh, there's a, a limit uh, of how many you can take at one time, yeah. Uh, we do have a, a locking mechanism where you can lock off the ones that you don't want to uh, sort of record over. Yeah. Um, and then we have some other uh, tricks up our sleeve for the camera system that we're going to talk about later. Very cool. So, uh, now, uh, I, I think we, um, we, we've seen a little bit of this but uh, I don't know how much you can talk about it. Um, how much, uh, how many new weapons uh, are there in the game? I guess I'm, I'm trying to word this in a way that you can answer right. because you probably <laughs> aren't going to give me a full number. But yeah, yeah, I can't talk about the exact number yet. But uh, there's, like I said, five new combo weapons that are in this environment. There's uh, a number of new weapons that are specifically built for this environment, like the uh, uh, garbage can that you can see there. These, new, these benches are new. There's one of the new food items, the cotton candy that he's eating there. Of course, cotton candy is really healthy, so you only get one health cube out of that one. Uh, but yeah, beyond this, this isn't the only place that we put new weapons in. The rest of the world will have some new weapons as well. Very cool. So uh, how many of these are combinable? How many of the, the new weapons are combinable? Yeah. Yeah, quite a few of them. So each combo weapon requires, of course, two... Uh, components. So there's a number that we have in this environment here, like the uh, cryopod, which is that new garbage can, and you combine that with the fire extinguishers, and hopefully we'll see it at some point in the demo here, but that's an awesome one because the zombie actually sort of gets launched up and hovers around, spraying out all of this fire extinguisher CO2 and freezes all the zombies underneath. Oh, Another little cool. uh, uh, tweak that we put on is any of the frost deckling on the ground, Frank actually slips on it now. So really? that was a nice little touch. That's really cool. What's he throwing right here? <laughs> Sparklers or? Uh, those are the fireworks. That's one of the best lures for sure. So for these rides, like I said, if you can take those barriers out and then toss those fireworks in, the zombies will gravitate towards the ride and then get smushed. Ah, uh, very cool. So there's like a whole new strategy element in here now, like uh, with the mm. rides in particular that I want to go out there and play it. <laughs> it looks like he's popping into the menu. The thing is, I only have one feed, so whoops. Looks like my editor popped up and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Hang on. This is my new studio, so it's a <laughs> it's a learning process. Yeah. Can we answer some <laughs> of these cool fan questions here? Definitely. So uh, anything that you see that you want to point out. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try and uh, say the name of who asked it and then uh, the question itself. Right. So, uh, well, will Frank need, this is from Blightshade. He said, will uh, Frank need to find Zombrex for himself now? Yes, uh, Frank is infected. That's part of the Dead Rising lore. Obviously, anybody who's played Dead Rising 1 knows at the end there that yep. uh, Isabella uh, helped him concoct that uh, formula to, to keep him alive. And that was sort of the springboard of Zombrex. That's where the whole idea of Zombrex came from. So in Dead Rising uh, 2 off the record, uh, Frank definitely needs to find Zombrex and keep himself alive. Uh, however, he can do this on the fly. He doesn't need to return to the safe house like in Dead Rising 2 where Chuck always had to come back to the safe house to give Katie the Zombrex. He can give himself a dose wherever. Very cool. That, I'm sure that'll be a uh, little bit of a stress relief. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's see... You see something that, that sticks out that you want to talk about? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, um, so there, there's an interesting one. What's considered the official ending of Dead Rising 2, ending S or in, uh, ending A? Case West seems to be based off ending A. Um, with off the record, 
this game definitely is a, a parallel universe. We're not saying that this one is canon. This is a what if situation. What if Frank was actually in the Fortune City outbreak? Right. In terms of ending S or ending A, uh, I see that almost as there's a really good ending. Uh, and then there's a, a not so good ending. And if you never got Case West and, and did that springboard uh, to continue, the assumption was that Chuck was actually uh, killed at the end there by uh, Zombie TK. Right. So uh, for myself, I would say that ending S is, is probably the official ending. But that's the beauty of Dead Rising. There's lots of different endings and, and lots of ways to interpret it. Yep. So uh, here's one from Rice. This one's pretty open-ended. Um, and maybe you've talked about everything you can yet. But what are the what other new features can we expect from off the record? Uh, other new features, well, there's uh, tons of new content. We've got, like I said, lots of new weapons, lots of new food. There's a number of new clothing items that we put into the game. We've got some brand new bosses, some some totally unique bosses that we put in, and the bosses I think are going to be one of the things that the fans get blown away by because we went all out on those. Uh, new survivor scoops. Um, plus improvements to the game. We improved all the loading times. That was something that the fans really called out as a problem with the R2. So loading times have gotten significantly better. And we also have the save checkpoint system. So that one uh, is a little more user friendly just yeah. before you're about to go into a, a boss battle or right after you've done a critical part in the story. Uh, you, you get the autosave uh, checkpoint just in case you die. You can always come back to that. And of course, uh, there's also the big new secret mode that we're not talking about yet that we uh, hinted at at Captivate. And uh, there was too much awesome in the theme park uh, to also talk about the mode, so we're going to save that for later on. But again, I think fans are going to be super happy with that one. Awesome. Well, I guess you'll have to wait to see what that is. Uh, let's see here. So will there, uh, will there be any more DLC Case West type of games? Like Case Otis is what right. they're asking for. <laughs> so there's there's no plans uh, of doing a DLC, sort of a Case Zero, Case West uh, 4 off the record. Uh, beyond that, who knows? Okay, let's see. So uh, Ad Amazing is asking, uh, he really loved the, the character uh, Chuck Green. Right. Do you see his off the record sort of as a loss for him? Uh, personally, I don't see it as a loss for him. I mean, Chuck Green was was our character. We were we sort of inherited the franchise from Capcom Japan, and we loved the first game. We loved Frank West, but DRT was an opportunity to do with a new character, and we feel that uh, Chuck was sort of ours, right? Obviously, we worked with the yeah. Capcom Japan production team, who were awesome, and and arrived at that character, but uh, we had a lot of fun with him. But when the opportunity came up to do Frank West uh, in Fortune City. The team really got excited about that. So, uh, if you like Chuck Green, you got Dead Rising too. If you like Frank West, you got off the record. Awesome. So, uh, let's see, Professor uh, Icepick is asking if we'll see any characters from earlier games come back. Maybe Otis. Dot dot dot. <laughs> um, I don't think Otis was liked enough for him to ever come back. But uh, there will, will certainly be some uh, surprises with characters returning. Uh, all of that we'll reveal once we start talking a little bit more about the story. Uh, there was an interesting question I wouldn't mind answering there, actually. Yeah, go uh, ahead. The, the question was about where does the theme park Uranus Zone actually sort of land in the world of Fortune City. If you know Fortune City well, uh, in the park, in the center, there's a series of large gates, which in DR2 were sort of the exit to Fortune City, and they were, they were blocked off. That's where... Uranus Zone lies is just beyond those gates there, uh, and there's uh, a number of ways to access it. Very In the cool. demo here, you can see at one point that there's an exit to get back out to the Atlantica uh, Casino, so that's one route to get in. There's another route that takes you directly out onto back into uh, Fortune Park there, and then there's another one. Awesome. Uh, another question there, has Frank learned more wrestling moves since the last time? Uh, yes, we've added more skill moves to the game, so not only do we have the, the neat uh, photo one which you may have seen where Frank does a bit of a buddy shot, grabs his zombie and takes yeah, a yeah. picture, we've also got some more of the kind of bruiser uh, Frank West style uh, wrestling moves that we've added. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's see. So uh, here's a good question all the way around. Um, 
So obviously, off the record, was uh, had a lot of help from fan feedback. So aside from the loading, what other things did uh, fan feedback help influence on this game? Hmm. Definitely lots of the, the tuning. Uh, boss tuning was one thing that was called out quite a bit in the forum. So there were a few bosses that we weren't entirely happy with where they ended up for the difficulty tuning. We've gone in and addressed some of that. Um, yeah, well, I mean, overall, the fans really seemed to enjoy Dead Rising 2. It, it was very satisfying for us when DR2 came out that people really thought that the same production team had, had built the game. Yep. And the fact that Capcom Vancouver, which used to be Blue Castle, built that game from the ground up and managed to replicate the feel of Dead Rising 1, we were incredibly proud of that. Yeah, and to have the fans overall be very, very happy with the game and, and have very few uh, sort of criticisms with it, it's actually made our jobs really easy. You might not be able to talk about this one, but uh, is the max level 50? I uh, can't talk about that one. No. All right. I figured. Yeah. I figured I'd ask anyway. Sorry, I can't give everything away. That's all right. Uh, so uh, are there any other references to Capcom games in this one, um, you know, that maybe weren't in Dead Rising 2? Mm. Um, there are a couple of references. Again, unfortunately, I probably can't talk about them yet. But, you might not want to uh, spoil them ever. Yeah, we, we, uh, we love Capcom games. I personally grew up playing uh, Capcom games. Uh, I'm going to date myself, but in the uh, early 80s and mid-80s, I loved all of the the old arcade games. I would spend tons of quarters in the arcades playing those games, and now to be actually working for Capcom and, and developing games like this is absolutely fantastic. So any opportunity that we have to, to take ideas from the old games and put them in, uh, we do our best to do that. Very cool. So uh, I, I don't know the, the answer to this one. Is the demo uh, out here, uh, does it have any bosses in it? No, this demo doesn't feature okay. any of the boxes. Uh, that was, someone was asking that question. So it, it's basically uh, a sneak peek at Uranus Zone and uh, yep. the zombie mayhem inside. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely... We wanted to show off the new area. One of the things after Captivate that we found was people were really excited about Frank, but the, the overwhelming question was how different is the game actually going to be? And we felt by showing this new environment, uh, we would very quickly answer that question. The game is going to be quite different. This area alone offers a, a bunch of new gameplay, like I was saying, the rides earlier. There's also carnival mini games that are in here where you can go and play these games. Uh, you know, it's almost like uh, shooting mini games or uh, throwing uh, balls into hoops kind of thing, but with the Uranus Zone twist and that sort of Dead Rising humor twist on it. But there are these little neat distractions just turn uh, PPs. So there's lots of gameplay opportunities that we got out of this rather than do something like a, another casino. And the interesting thing with the theme park is the first idea we had was to do another casino. That was going to be our new area. And we went down the path of, of talking about what would be a cool theme for a casino. Would we do like an Asian yeah. theme thing or uh, perhaps a space theme casino? But the more we thought about it, even though the visuals might have been really cool, there just weren't any new gameplay opportunities that we could add. The theme park was a bit of a no-brainer where all of a sudden we add all these new gameplay mechanics that we haven't yet seen in a Dead Rising game and we can't be happier with the way it turned out. The other interesting thing is that uh, the first uh, instinct was to do a western theme theme park. So we were going to have saloons and uh, six-gun shooting mini games and so on but as soon as we latched on to that sort of uh, alien abduction culture, uh, New Mexico, right, uh, right. Arizona, Nevada, uh, that one, the concept artist just started going crazy with it, and there was no turning back after that. So the end product, I think we're super happy with. So uh, Turnabout MVC asks, um, he's asking about Frank and his design and how he's a little bit older in this one. Right. Yeah, I noticed there's a previous question as well about backstory. So the backstory with this game is that after Dead Rising 1, and the Willamette incident, Frank actually became a celebrity for a while. Right. He, he was recognized as the person who uncovered the outbreak in Dead Rising 1, the Willamette in incident, and uh, he had a, a book, best-selling book, he was on talk shows, and then actually had his own talk show, but Frank being Frank, he let all of this go to his head, and he actually sort of flushed his fame down the toilet. So this is several years past uh, Willamette, and 
Frank finds himself in Fortune City because he's appearing on TIR. Anybody who saw the demo from Captivate uh, saw what we did there. He comes yeah. in, he, he, uh, he's in a wrestling costume, and he's doing his sort of celebrity zombie killer thing. And of course, after that, once he stumbles upon the outbreak, he realizes that this is an opportunity to get himself back to where he belongs, which is to be a star photojournalist and uncovering this conspiracy. Very cool. Oh, Frank. <laughs> Someone's asking about tofu zombies. I think they're uh, Resident Evil fans. Right. <laughs> you know tofu from Resident Evil? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no to tofu zombies. Uh, another note there about alien costume. Yeah, we have the alien uh, hostesses, alien zombie hostesses that are wandering around. We do have one of those outfits in the environment that Frank can put on and make himself look ridiculous. I saw that in the trailer. So, uh, here's a good question then uh, about his age and how the years have passed. Uh, will his age uh, play any factor in the way that he actually acts? Mm. Uh, there, there's a few subtleties in there. If you idle for too long, we have some idols where he's actually stretching out his back and uh, groaning a little bit, <laughs> showing his age. Um, obviously, it's not fun to play an old man in a video game. We want right. him to be tough and, and fun to, to uh, play. And it was definitely important for us right out of the gate that he was uh, relatively strong because he is Frank West. He has fought zombies before. Right. This isn't a new thing to him. So he does have some new skills right out of the box. And overall, I think he's a tougher character than he was in Dead Rising 1. Very cool. Let's see. Someone's asking, when can they play the game? Sorry? When can they play it? Oh, <laughs> oh the demo. Um, no real plans for a demo right now. The game is shipping in the fall, uh, so demo is a bit of a question mark right now, but in the fall, this game releases on PS3, 360, and PC. Very cool. So is there anything that uh, you'd want to talk about to these guys that we haven't touched on? Uh, we've covered a lot. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on in the, in the demo and in the game for sure. I think that people will be really excited about the story once we once we start revealing some of that stuff. And any of the guys out there that are, are true Dead Rising fans and they played the first one, they played this one and so on, they'll be surprised, I think, with uh, how engaging the story is this time around and some of the surprises that we have with the missions. Very cool. So I, I guess that brings up another question. What's the game like? like compared to Dead Rising 2? Is it, are we basically talking about the, the same amount uh, of time spent in game? Uh, spent in game in terms of gameplay? Or? Yeah, like the, the length of the game, the story overall. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, so one of the, the tenets of Dead Rising is the sandboxing on a clock and having you know, multiple days to solve this mystery and that hasn't changed for off the record. So you'll have missions, key missions that you need to complete in order to keep the story going and you've got all of the sandbox elements of the scoops. We've got new survivors, some, some cool new survivor missions that you can engage in. And of course, uh, sandbox time where you can just sort of roam around and kill zombies in interesting ways and level up. So does that mean, uh, so someone's asking right here, Sir Dwayne, uh, they want to see an infinite mode. Well, I said that there was a new mode coming. Um, <laughs> it, I, I can't say if it's uh, infinity mode, but it's uh, it's going to be really cool. All right. I mean, th those questions are always tough. I'd love to talk about everything, but uh, the guys would get mad at me. Sounds good. Well, uh, thanks again for uh, hopping on, Jason. Glad that you could uh, show us a little bit more about it and talk to us a bit about it. I wish we uh, we had a playable thing here. I'm sure you're awesome at the game. So. <laughs> You know all the little secrets that aren't being shown off. Yeah, yeah. This um, actually, this is one of our fun new combo weapons here. It's a tennis ball launcher combined with saw blades, and we do have another one with the tennis ball launcher uh, combined with motor oil. So you shoot flaming tennis balls, which is fun. <laughs> so are these pre-combined in this demo? In the demo, they're pre-combined. Yeah, yeah, just so that people on the floor could get a chance to play with them without having to build them. But Dead Rising uh, Two has the, uh, well, built the convention of combo weapons and using the combo cards. So either getting hints from the combo posters or from leveling up, you get the combo cards, and then you know what components you need to, to go to the combo rooms and build them. Cool. 
Very cool. Uh, she just got out of that uh, crisis or uh, cryo tube. That zombie. She, oh, she got put in the cryo tube like a good three minutes ago. Right. <laughs> just made her way out of it. Anyway. Well, is there anything that you'd want to talk about with Capcom Games Vancouver in general? I know you probably can't really talk about the future. I mean, this is mm -hmm. this is a big thing, but it's coming out this fall. So, uh, I mean, the studio is becoming an important part for Capcom. Yeah, we're we're really proud, like I said, to be part of Capcom. Capcom is kind of in our blood since we were young. Uh, there's a number of uh, younger guys in the studio as well, sort of up and coming artists and, and SEs and designers and so on that really love Capcom games. And I think that's important that you, you love the company you work for. Definitely. And you love kind of the history of the company. So we are big Capcom fans for sure. Uh, the studio is in Vancouver, uh, started originally as Blue Castle Games in 2005 and then became Capcom Game Studios last October. And right now we're growing and uh, this is the big project that we're working on them at the moment. We've got some other stuff in the works that we can't talk about yet, but right now everybody in the studio is very, very excited and, and enjoying what they're doing, so that's awesome. Sounds good. Can't wait to hear more. So when can we expect to see more about Dead Rising then? Uh, well, E3, we're, hopefully everybody's seen the trailer or will be seeing the trailer. I'd, I'd love to hear some of the feedback on that. Um, and then we've got some of the other big events that are coming up later in the year, so as those roll out, we'll get some more information out. Definitely stay tuned to hear about our new secret mode that we keep talking about. And hopefully at some point we'll have some more information about the story. Sounds awesome. Thanks again for, okay. uh, for coming in and talking. Yeah, thanks for and, having uh, me. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to steal you at one of the big events again and have you uh, tell us about what that mode is. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Take care.